What is up YouTube, Jake Parker here, and after endless months of waiting, I was finally able to join the Once Human Creator program and with that get my hands on the Once Human Close Beta. And now that I've been finally able to dive in and play, here's my impressions on my first four hours to hopefully get you excited and up to speed on some of the basic game systems the moment you drop into the post-apocalyptic world. Your first moments in this strange new land sees you learning that you are a metahuman with superhuman abilities dropped into a dimensionally destroyed world guided by a dimensional black world called V and once human wastes no time in stretching the limits of creativity between killing enemies called deviants and using their body parts to attack other enemies in a world that looks like it was designed in a caffeine induced sleep deprived haze. For me personally, games are at their best when stretching the boundaries of reality and once human really hits that mark right out of the gate within a few short minutes. After the brief tutorial, you learn more of the core aspects of the game, such as harnessing mayflies, which are controlled deviations, which grant you increased and unique powers and abilities, and the infamous survival systems, which see you deploying some of the most common skills, such as farming material by smacking a tree or stone with a rock, keeping yourself nourished by drinking boiled water and building and crafting all of the essential tools and weapons you will use throughout your journey. A quick thing to note is that it took me a good 10 to 15 minutes to learn that when you're crafting something, it's not immediate. And in fact, you have to go into the queue at the bottom left corner of your screen while crafting to obtain it. Yeah, I, I felt really stupid about this since I just know Life Pal World on its release and it literally is the exact same thing. And it's immediately after this we fight our first major boss called the Siren, which is a gigantic mutated radio tower that has broken through a dimensional rift, but it's nothing that a bunch of well-placed arrows to a satellite dish that can't defeat it. And with the core systems of the game under wraps, the game quite literally throws you out to your own to the point you're falling out of the sky towards your death. Landing safely after calling V out to fly you around in beautiful gliding fashion with nothing but a weapon, a melee item, and a main quest highlighted on the top left corner of your screen. At this point, the entire world is open for you to explore, craft, and truly make your own. Immediately out of the gate, the first thing I got addicted to was the crafting system, building a base and farming every material I had readily available while finding the perfect location to build my permanent mansion in the game. I'm not sure how it works, but for some reason, Once Human really makes it oddly satisfying, if not almost addictive, to chop down a tree or smack it with a rock <laughs> with another rock to continue laying the foundations for my next base idea. It's also where you learn the importance of the cradle, which is essentially your upgrade system, and you continue to level it up. The more you level up, the more ciphers you obtain, the more you can unlock throughout the game, such as base materials, craftable items, weapons, resources, realistically anything. I will be honest, it became extremely overwhelming trying to navigate the user interface and understand what just goes where and what does what, since everything in the menus realistically becomes open to you at the same time. So I just ended up again going back and smacking trees to build up my base more because I really didn't know what to do. After an hour passes without realizing it, I finally embarked on the main journey to continue the main quests of the game because honestly I forgot they even existed for a while. Now given the game is still in closed beta, the dialogue is incredibly basic at best and character movements very rarely sync up with the dialogue at all. But if you're somebody who focuses on gameplay over aesthetics like me, then realistically that's not a problem. Oh, and randomly without warning, I somehow misclicked on my keyboard and ended up opening the Journey tab, which is essentially a bunch of achievements that, when redeemed, provides you with different rewards such as experience and more. I honestly had no idea this was even a thing until it just popped up on my screen and I accidentally clicked the button on my keyboard. Otherwise, again, I probably would have skipped it since it's one of the things that unlocked alongside everything else from the get-go. Getting back to the main quest finally, and remembering the hotkey to place a respawn campsite, which we did at the beginning of the game, we ended up fighting our first mini boss with a super cool design, firing a chain gun at me while you attempt to pummel it with bullets to kill it and unlock the rift anchor scattered throughout the area. In essence, this is really where the game starts to pick up, but a real big word of caution is you really want to pay attention to where the game actually tells you to go because I ended up randomly going to a much higher area that wasn't part of the quest. So, you know, realistically, if you're paying attention to exactly where the quest might tell you, it's very easy to get sidetracked like I did. Now, after recovering and realizing my extremely level one noob mistake, I finally ended up where I needed to be, and this is where I finally got a taste of a bit of the social systems in the game by pairing up and voicing with a random player in the game. 
With the same quest active at the exact same time, we immediately partnered together and used the voice chat to continue our fun throughout the game with some notable things like experience being given to both players at the same time and not just shared, meaning that playing with other players is actually a massive advantage for leveling up and unlocking things throughout the game. In contrast, it was also difficult to learn that the voice chat is predominantly locked to being close to each other and base restrictions by default don't allow you to share things such as crafting tables and storage crates. Something that was never taught and we had to learn it on our own, not to mention the cluttered navigation of trying to invite each other to what is essentially a guild or a party, which again, highlights the overwhelmed feeling that could be found when everything just gets unlocked for you at the same time once you start the game. But lastly, and arguably the most bad moment of once humans so far was the rift beacon which is essentially once humans dungeons this is where you enter and fight to defeat the enemies within and the fight was freaking insanely fun to do the high octane combat paired with the need for team collaboration and awesome rewards at the end not to mention the ability to change difficulty on itself made it a standout experience that completely piqued my interest in all of the different offerings that once human has to offer now to sum it all up, after four hours of play, we clearly and barely scratched the surface of what Once Human has to offer, and no doubt this will be a game that will thrill excited players with a mixture of crafting, survival, shooter, and of course fantasy action. This game hits all of the right marks despite a very overwhelming beginning where players could realistically see themselves getting so much thrown at them so fast, but after slowing down and taking things one step at a time, Once Human is simply a great experience to be had. Thank you so much for watching, and if you look forward to more Once Human and gaming content, be of course sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications to know when my next video will be live. Thank you for being the reason I do what I do, and until the next video, game on.